What's going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got some more NBA news to of course be talking about with you guys. For those of you who actually hadn't seen this, Russell Westbrook of course ended up being traded to the you know Los Angeles Lakers. I think a lot of us probably know this you know, at this point. But pretty much everyone therefore went on to say that Bradley Beal is actually going to be requesting a trade, right? Like that just makes the most amount of sense. And a report actually came from a dude named Kamaya Beal, which was reportedly a, you know, a relative, of course, of Bradley Beal that said that apparently that a trade to the Golden State Warriors was wrapped up and would publicly be released at you know the NBA draft. That never happened. Bradley Beal never got traded to the Golden State Warriors and Woj actually went on and said that that is the big rumor going around right now. But at the time of this draft, he is not requested a trade. But in the meantime, saying this, it is being reported that the Boston Celtics have kind of come out of nowhere and look like they could be nearly the front runner to get Bradley Beal right now. But they would not be offering Brown in a package, which is pretty much kind of, you know, I guess kind of self-explanatory. Like, let's be honest here. They're not going to offer Jalen Brown, you wouldn't think. Um, But hey, could they get Bradley Beal? Like, how would they get this done? Of course, I think they would probably do a sign and trade of Evan Fournier. So I definitely think Bradley Beal is worth about... He's worth three future first round picks. That is a fact. Like, I mean, if Drew Holiday was worth three future first round picks, this dude is worth that. He's worth much more than Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday was worth two bad contracts and three future first round picks. In my opinion, Bill will be worth a solid role player, a young, a good young player or two, and three future first round picks, which they will get if the Celtics offer. They will offer three future first round picks, a sign and trade of Evan Fournier, and then I think Romeo Langford as well could definitely be put in this deal. And then think about it, if the Boston Celtics can get this and they can partner Bradley Beal up with Jason Tatum, right, and Jalen Brown, you've got an insane team. So the difference with Bradley Beal and Kemba Walker is insane. Like when they had Kemba Walker, Kemba Walker was another shot creator. That's why he didn't really work out with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. He was too much of that shot creator and they had too many shot careers that already got the main two, plus Kemba makes it three. I get, you know, I know that Bradley Beal is a shot creator, but unlike Kemba, Bradley Beal is a much better catch and shoot player. Like this dude, if you asked Bradley Beal, let's just say you went up to him and said, hey man, you can't, you can't create your own shot even once this game. All your shots have to be off catch and shoot plays and need to score off that for this game right? This dude will still probably drop 20 to 30 points of just catch and shoot plays. He's a very good player at getting open, a very good shooter. Trust me, like, he would be so much of a better fit than what Kemba Walker would be. Plus, three future first round picks, a sign and trade of, like, Evan Fournier, and that first, you know, and, um, Romeo Langford. That's really not that much at all. Then, I, I would assume you'd probably play Bradley Beal as your point guard. Like, I know Bradley Beal, he's not a point guard, but he still does average you know, decent amount of assists and can be an alright playmaker here and there. Like, I genuinely could see it happening if they just said, alright, Bradley Beal starts at point guard, Neesmith starts at shooting guard, um, Jalen Brown small forward, Tatum at power forward, and Horford at center. Like, that team should be competing for that, you know, of course, Eastern title, if you think about it. Plus, off the bench, they could have, like, Peyton Pritchard, who would be there starting point guard if they don't start Beal at that point guard position, you would think. And, of course, all the veterans they'll probably go out and get. Moses Brown still will come off their bench as well. This Boston Celtics team would actually be, like, starting to look really, really interesting if they can make something like this happen. While the Washington Wizards, like, if we look at a scenario of the Washington Wizards now, their team is, like, basically built off an insane amount of role players. Like, you'd have Thomas Bryant, Rui Hachimura, Davis Bertans, Daniel Gafford, uh, Danny Avdia, um, who, you know, the young players they all went out and drafted today, Corey Kispert as well, Evan Fournier, Kyle Kuzma, um, KCP, Montrose Harrell. This team would have, like, probably the biggest depth team in the NBA. You'd probably have, like, 13 or 14 solid players 
that will get minutes legitimately every single night. But the thing is, I don't know if it'd work. Like, look, they could push for the playoffs, but how many role players can you have? Like, this team does still doesn't really have a point guard. Doesn't really solve their point guard things. I guess you could play, like, Romeo Langford at point guard, but they still don't really have that point guard. So, it kind of be, like, a, a little bit weird to kind of see how this would all, you know, happen. Like, I don't even know. But, hey... It, w- it will be really interesting to see if this happens. In my opinion, though, I don't think Bradley Beal is going to be getting traded. I think he's made his mind up, and I think he wants to stay, you know, with the Wizards. Like, we just got a recent rumor that Spencer Dimwitty is actually eyeing the Wizards. Like, so if they can get him to the team, they'll finally have a point guard. Like, realistically, a, a core of Spencer Dimwitty, Bradley Beal, Rui Hachimura, Darvis Bertans, Daniel Gafford... Um, you know, the players they drafted, like Corey Kispert, etc., Denny Avdia. It'd be a really, really young team, but that team could definitely push for the playoffs, especially if we get a, a healthy Spencer Dinwiddie back. It'd probably be like an 8-10 to 10 seed again, just like it was pretty much this season. But again, I think if the Celtics can get Bradley Beal and sign like a bunch of veterans in free agency, I can't see why this team wouldn't you know, go a uh, long distance. Like, in my opinion, Al Horford and, you know, Bradley Beal, those two players are, of course, way better than Kemba Walker, Evan Fournier, uh, the picks, um, you know, and Romeo Langford. Like, that's not even a, a question. You really bring in two really, really nice players for Kemba, who's always injured. Evan Fournier, yes, is a very good role player. Those picks, they don't really need, and Romeo Langford is like, again, they don't really need anymore. So the Boston Celtics do pretty good. And let me say, if they can get Bradley Beal, right, their depth is starting to look like this. So you'd have Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Bradley Beal, Al Horford, uh, no, Peyton Pritchard, right, Marcus Smart, Tristan Thompson, Aaron Neesmith, probably Jabari Parker. Uh, I think they'll bring back, and then of course, I'd say two really solid veterans, which they'll sign for free agency. You could be looking at a very good rotation of about 11 or 12 players, which definitely could, you know, contend them to be a top five team in the East, in my opinion. So, again, if the Boston Celtics can get Bradley Beal, that is a that is a very, very big win. But if they can't, I'm, I'm still looking for them to go out and get, you know, a point guard here and there in free agency. I think they'll also be interested in Spencer Dinwiddie, but you don't want to give him you know, too big of a deal, I know they'll be interested in Lonzo Ball as well, they just desperately need a point guard, because even though I know Peyton Pritchett has been pretty good for them, I mean like, 8 points per game in his first season, and 41% from 3, and trust me, he'll probably get a lot better, I still don't know if he's really like, a starting guard material, like, Marcus Smart as well seems to have found a, you know, a, a solid part on this bench, in my opinion, they need to trade Tristan Thompson, um, I definitely could see, like, if I was the Boston Celtics, right, and not many teams were offering to, you know, take Tristan Thompson, there will be teams like the Cavs and OKC who would take on Tristan Thompson's $9 million contract if you just gave him a second round pick. Like, legitimately, I could see the Cavs saying, all right, Thompson, if he wants to come back to the team, be a nice veteran, and you give us a second round pick for taking him on, they'll be all right. And again, the Celtics win from that because the second round pick is nothing, Plus, you find you get to give minutes to, of course, you know, your, your big man, of course, you know, Robert Williams, who will play a bit of power forward, a bit of backup center here and there as well. Al Horford will start center, and then Moses Brown will be like their backup center as well. So, hey, a lot of these moves will be really interesting to see how they will, of course, all go, but I just can't see the Celtics keeping Tristan Thompson, and I guess, you know, a lot of people can probably see that as well. But of course, if you haven't already, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for all the latest NBA content and NBA news if you guys haven't already. Um, you know, don't forget just to comment your thoughts and opinions down below. Bradley Bill to the Celtics, could it happen? Spencer Dinwiddie to the Wizards, would you guys like to, you know, maybe see that happen as well? Of course, I would definitely really like to know all of your thoughts and opinions. Don't forget to check out my podcast as well if you haven't already, which I will all be linking in the description down below. But as I was saying, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.